Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to Dr. Han's classroom. So the past week or so, the number of COVID-19 cases has been on the rise, and you may have a lot of questions, such as where is it happening in the U.S.? What about the number of deaths and number of hospitalizations? And if you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, what are the differences? So this week I'll present the data I've collected so far from reputable sources, and to answer some of these questions. Without further ado, let's head to the screen. Let's first look at the number of cases. This is a data set from Our World in Data, and we can see the number of cases per million is up by more than three times compared to June 23rd. And the overall trend here is also increasing in a log phase, and it certainly looks very much like the whole U.S. is moving into another wave. But U.S. is big, and when the data is being broken down by states and their populations, as of July 23rd, this graph tells us that Louisiana is leading in the number of new cases right now, and the Northeast region is at the bottom. Now, this is quite different than the previous small wave in April, when Northeast was in the lead. Although this graph can change in a very Short period of time. This is because here is the hotspot map, and there are at least three major regions that are currently experiencing high cases. And at the time that I'm recording this video, the, the hotspot is at Louisiana, and by the time you watch this video, it could very well be shifting to Florida regions. So, what does all these data suggest? Let's take a look at this graph that illustrates the percentage of residents age 12 or above that are fully vaccinated, and the lighter the color represents a lesser amount of vaccinated people. And right now, here is concentrated in Missouri, Arkansas, and Louisiana. This match the hotspot map that I just presented. However, Florida here it seems to be in an exception when the overall vaccination rate in Florida is quite high. If you put two graphs here side by side here, it certainly looks like there is a casual association pattern between the lower vaccination rates and the higher number of new COVID-19 cases. Now, of course, it will need statistic validations. I understand many people would argue positive cases of COVID does not mean everyone is sick. So let's look at the COVID hospitalization numbers. And as of July 23rd, a total of 28,780 individuals are now hospitalized with COVID-19 cases, which is a 57% increase in the last 14 days. Now, hospitalization lag cases by about three to four weeks, so this number will continue to increase. And this is again another graph showing an increased hospitalization rate in states with a lower vaccination rate. Of course, Florida here is a little of an exception. Now let's look at the worst outcome death from COVID. The number of deaths right now is slowly increasing, but the case fatality rate is still maintaining at about 2%. But as the number of hospitalization goes up, the number of deaths will likely follow in the coming few weeks. And if you're still watching at this point, you're probably having a burning question, how many vaccinated people are infected? And according to the data presented on the CDC website as of July 19, there were 5,914 patients with COVID-19 vaccine severe breakthrough infections. This means these patients had two doses of the vaccine and still got hospitalized with COVID-19 diagnosis. Now, this also includes 1,141 cases of deaths. But here, there's a short note here. Notice that about 292 or 26% of the death cases were not related to COVID-19 according to the CDC data. 
But very unfortunate here, the CDC is not currently tracking asymptomatic or mild breakthrough cases. And here is a statement the CDC stopped doing that since May 1st. And that was way before the Delta variant starting to dominate the new cases here in the US. So we will not know, okay, one, the true vaccine breakthrough rate. And second, how it will relate to the Delta variant. And the US is also not doing good enough job in sequencing. And to answer how Delta variants affect fully vaccinated people, this piece of data will have to come from the UK where they currently have the best variant surveillance system in the world. According to the UK Public Health England SARS-CoV-2 variants of concern technical briefing from July 9th, I know this is quite a long time ago, from February 1st to June 21st, the UK sequenced 123,620 Delta cases, and among those, 10,834 cases were fully vaccinated, and that is about 8.76% of the total Delta cases. Now, very interestingly, the number split almost equally between people below 50 or 50 and above. Now, this number suggests that the Delta cases does not appear to be more infectious in fully vaccinated older population. Now, let's look at the unvaccinated people. Now here we are looking at the same table of those 123,620 cases, 71,932 or 58% of the Delta cases were found in unvaccinated people. And among those, over 98% of the cases were people less than 50 years old. Now these two numbers suggest that younger unvaccinated people were contributing to the majority of the Delta cases in UK between February 1st to June 21st. And when we look further, we also see that unvaccinated people less than 50 years old contributed to more than half of the hospitalization cases. Now, although the numbers of deaths were still significantly higher in older people with or without vaccination. And if you're still watching at this point, don't get angry yet, okay? Now, I know you must have an argument saying, Almost half of new UK cases are vaccinated, and this is true, but we have to look closer to what the article means. And your information is probably coming from an article similar to this one saying half of UK COVID infections are in people who are at least partly vaccinated. But if you look closer to the graph, you can see that fully vaccinated people are at one point some percent of positive rate compared to unvaccinated people, which reach above 5% of positive rate. So we really need to pay attention to the fully vaccinated term. Of course, half vaccinated or first dose is not providing enough coverage. And let's look at the conclusion from both UK and US data. So based on the UK Public Health England document, older population is still benefited from vaccination in terms of lower hospitalization from Delta variant infection. Now notice it is really important to recognize the term fully vaccinated. And the majority of the Delta cases were unvaccinated people less than 50 years old. And the majority of Delta hospitalized cases were unvaccinated people less than 50 years old. Although deaths from Delta cases was still dominated by people over 50 years old regardless of vaccination status. Now coming back to the US, we can now see that a very casual association between lower vaccination rates and a higher number of new cases. Now, although I know there are some exceptions, such as in Florida. The unfortunate side is that in the US, we are not able to determine the true vaccine breakthrough rate from the Delta variant because we are not closely monitoring all cases that are breaking through the vaccine. 
and I think these data still leave us some questions. First, should we resume indoor mask mandate? And second, with school semester coming up very soon, how will it affect the upcoming semester, particularly for children under the age of 12? And third, when will vulnerable people need a booster dose of the vaccine? And lastly, for all unvaccinated people, including children, the first line of defense against infection is their innate immune system. And if you would like to learn more about how innate immune systems fight viral infection in general, you can check out this one-minute short and brief video, and the link is in the description box down below. That is all for this week. I hope I've answered some of your questions. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to follow more content related to COVID-19 and other health science topic, please consider hitting the subscribe button. This channel needs your help to reach more people. And I'll see you in the next video. Meanwhile, please stay safe and healthy. Bye.